Hello everyone, my name is Asid. Today I'm going to provide a quick overview on how to parse JSON with Rust. So you may or may not have heard about Rust before. Um, in simple terms, it's a up-and-coming programming language built with efficiency and safety in mind. So high performance and highly safe code. Um, so th in this video, I'm just going to jump ahead. I am not going to show you how to install Rust step by step, though it is a fairly straightforward process. Just go to the Rust homepage, rustlang.org here, and um, visit the install page. And there are straightforward steps on how to install it for different operating systems. So once you've done this, you will have, you should have both Rust, the compiler, and Cargo, which is Rust's official package manager installed on your computer. Once both of these are installed, you should be able to go ahead and follow along with these steps. All right. All right. So on the left uh, of this screen, I have two terminal windows. Uh, they're all both in the same directory. So I just have created this Git repository Rust JSON example. And the first step uh, is I want we need to create a cargo uh, project. So assuming you have cargo installed, you can do cargo init and enter and it creates a binary package which is what we want you can also create a library by passing in dash dash lib like so okay so if we look at our directory structure now it has created a few things for us um, I had the readme here already so don't mind that but it creates a cargo.toml file and it sets up a source directory which is where our Rust code goes. So if we look at the cargo toml file, it's pretty simple. Um, it has a section that defines kind of package information, the name of the package, or in Rust terms, we call it a crate. The version, you know, authors and the edition, um, and just general stuff. And this is the crucial part, this dependencies section. This is where we're going to list any dependencies we require um, in this program. We, we are going to add uh, two. Okay, so let me quit out of that. Um, so now we have a new crate set up. Uh, we can go ahead and install the JSON parsing library we're going to be using in this video. And uh, going back to the browser here on the right, I have this page open uh, for the Surdy JSON uh, library. And so, um, long story short, Surdy is a extremely powerful parsing library slash infrastructure uh, that's used all throughout Rust. And one part of that infrastructure, or this JSON library maintained maintained by the Surdy folks, builds upon that and allows you to use Surdy to parse JSON. Okay. So if we scroll down a bit. It says, you know what, this is how you set the dependencies. So we'll just copy that. We go to our cargo tumble, go down here, you know, we paste uh, this in, save that and quit. So now this is what my cargo tumble looks like, right? And then we just do a cargo build. And cargo build, what it does is it first figures out which dependencies are not, uh, have not been pulled yet. It pulls them, it then builds them. And then finally, once all of your dependencies are built, it builds it builds your source code. Okay, so that that was pretty quick. So um, now we have Surdy JSON installed. Okay, we haven't started using it yet, but it's there. Um, so if we go and look at the main file that was automatically created for us, it's fairly bare bones. You just have a main function; it prints "Hello World." So let's just uh, go ahead and run that. So it runs it for us. Hello world. Great. Okay. Everything looks good. Okay. So going back to the Surdy JSON page, um, it tells us, you know what, this is what JSON looks like. Cool. And then it gives us an example here. So this is an example. Um, the key point to understand is that Surdy JSON provides you with two ways to parse JSON. Okay. The first way is untyped JSON. So what you pass in is you pass in your um, 
JSON object, right? You parse that as a value, a JSON value in, in, in the library's terms. And then you simply access values by key, just like you would do in most other languages, you know, Python, JavaScript, uh, etc. So this we're going to try this approach first. The second approach is strongly typed. And this is similar to approaches used in Scala, for example, if you ever use the Scala uh, uh, JSON libraries. And I'm sure other languages have a similar uh, approach too. And this is kind of the more recommended approach for uh, to write more maintainable, I would say, uh, JSON parsers, decoders, and encoders. Okay, so let's start off with the untyped example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the main file we had earlier. I'm going to uh, clear out whatever we had, uh, save that. And then I'm just going to copy this entire thing and paste it over here. Really simple. Okay, so just walk through it. We have a function. Uh, we have, it returns a result. Um, it creates some data, a JSON string, just a raw JSON string here. Parses it and then tries to extract some values. So to avoid, to reduce the complexity slightly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this result thing. Right? I'm going to make it an un, kind of an, just a, a dumb main function. We don't need this import, right? Um, and we won't do any error checking. We'll just unwrap here. So this isn't something you should be doing in production code, but just for the sake of simplifying things. Oh, and let's remove that OK there. OK? So we quit that out. And once again, we do cargo run, which builds and runs it for us. And voila! Prints out you know, the name, John Doe, and the correct number. OK, so we have that working. So let's you know, toy around with it a bit. Uh, let's add a new field, and we'll call it uh, address. Let's say, let's say uh, 123 Baker Street. Uh, we write that, and then we'll just modify our print statement um, to add who lives at, who lives at, add a format, specify there, and we just need to print out the address. Okay, so that's good. Let's try to run that, build and run, and again, everything looks good. You know, he lives at 123 Baker Street. Amazing. Okay, um, so how about we try to uh, let's assume that we made a mistake right? instead of specifying address uh, up in our JSON here uh, we made it we called it or let's keep an address over there and uh, um, here we try to extract a adder I don't know for example right let's build this builds absolutely fine okay because and this is the issue with the untyped approach because the compiler really doesn't know all you gave it is a string key and it can only accept that there really is no way to tie that to the actual json schema you're expecting and so your code will build you try to run it and we get some weird null value which is mm, not good okay so if you change your schema you need to make sure to update all the call sites all the areas where you extract using the key where you extract the value okay so that's not a good sign uh, it doesn't point to a very maintainable approach uh, especially once you have a lot of JSON parsing and decoding and, and so on <clears throat> so this brings us to the second approach the second approach 30 JSON exposes is strongly typed data structures okay so for strongly typed data structures, it says you can use this example. So let's copy it out. Or actually, let's just copy out this part. Okay. Copy that out. We will just replace the previous body here. Um, right. And we'll also need this stuff. So let's paste that in. 
and we will need these well just this import should be able to um, oops should be able to get rid of the other import because we don't need use value in it okay so let's walk through this code so forget about this for a second same idea we define our raw JSON string here the input and then we use the same function we used earlier the from stir function um, sorry now that I just noticed this let's remove that and just unwrap it which is something you do not want to do in production again you need to explicitly handle that error but keeping that aside um, we call the same function but instead of specifying the type as value we specify the type as person well, okay so what is a person well we go up here it's a custom type it's a custom struct we've defined uh, that has you know a bunch of fields name string age u8 and phones a vector of strings okay and if you notice that matches exactly the schema we're expecting in our raw json input okay so basically this struct here is saying this is what a person looks like this allows the rust compiler to be able to map and tell you okay wait you said you're expecting a name but you're trying to access for example a last name at compile time your code will simply not compile as your schema changes so as long as you keep your uh, your uh, your schema quote unquote schema or basically your struct definition up to date your JSON will parse fine now there's a special some special code here if you notice we mark we need to mark the struct as being serializable and or deserializable what does that mean when we mark a struct with serialize what we're saying is we're implementing um, JSON serialization that is converting this struct into raw JSON when we mark it or when we uh, mark derive deserialize on this struct we're saying if we get raw json we can deserialize it back to the struct so what does that mean do you need to implement both of these no so for example uh, i only expect to convert from this type from this struct into raw json then really all i need is serialize and vice versa if i only ever expect to convert raw json a raw JSON string input into a struct then all I need is deserialize okay so we'll we'll first build it like this and then we'll we'll confirm our uh, our explanation by removing serialize so first let's try to build this so go ahead we do cargo build oh no wait a second here it tells us huh use of undeclared type certy and then lots of red stuff here but this first error kind of gives us an indication our project isn't aware of certy so if we come back and we open our cargo tumble file we find that it is true we don't have certy uh, marked as a dependency explicitly right which is interesting there was nothing mentioned here about that in the documentation um, but if you click on this derive section it says oh okay there's some stuff we have to add and this is the key line see that we need to install certy with a specific version and we need to enable a specific feature the derived feature let's copy this line over here and we will add it just under the, the certy json dependency okay now we'll do cargo build so it should okay great so now it's pulling some additional uh, crates dependencies and building them let's give that a moment let's go back here to the surdy json readme file all right so our project now compiles builds great let's try to run it excellent so we get the same output we got last time please call john doe at the number blah 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 so let's go back to our uh, source file and if you remember what we discussed about serialize and deserialize in this particular case all we need is to be able to convert from a raw string into a person right so really we don't need serialize let's just remove that 
rebuild and run. Great. Absolutely great. Everything works as needed. Um, we get a little warning about unused imports, so we can remove that. And then we also get a new warning about age never being read. Hmm. Okay. So let's open our source file again. And let's add age here. So who is years of age? I know that's weird to say, but you know. Uh, and let's just add p.h here. Okay. Cargo run. And yep, we pull out age correctly. We lost that warning because now we're using H. So let's finally remove this warning here. Run again. No warnings. Great. Okay, so let's try to do what we did earlier. If you remember in the untyped example, we tried to um, add an address. So let's do that. And lives at just paste the address there. And let's just try this out with the address. Run it again. Oh no, we don't have an address. This was caught at compile time. So we did not have to build our, our program and then run it and then run it with the correct input such that it triggers this. Great. So now let's just add the address field as a string. Okay. And we run again. Oh, okay. This is bad. Now we got a runtime panic. It's telling us that missing field address. Hmm. Okay. We go back to our source file. We try to get it here. Oh, but we don't have it here. So this is a case of our schema going out of sync with the input JSON. So that's something, of course, that can only be caught at one time. Um, but that's fine. So we catch a good chunk of errors. Another 123 Baker Street to fix this. And we try once more, and everything is good, working as expected. Great. Okay, so to sum up, what we did was we created a new Rust uh, uh, project, or what is referred to as a crate. We installed Surdy JSON and later on Surdy. And then we went through the two different approaches for parsing JSON with the JSON, which are one untyped JSON parsing. If we go back on the right here, which is this approach, where you just define your JSON input, parse it out as a generic value, and then use um, access values by key and position. Um, and then we used approach two, uh, which is the strongly typed approach where we define our schema, implement serialize and or deserialize, and access fields um, as struct fields. Okay. Now there's also the same approaches can be used to construct JSON values. So this is the untyped approach um, where we have some JSON. You see this JSON macro here we've defined. So it's just some magic happening under the hood to convert it into a value. And then all we just do is, you know, two string. It just serializes it as a string. Okay. Um, with the typed approach, it's pretty much the same. You define your address structure. Okay. This is our structure here. And now we want to convert it into uh, raw JSON. So we just call this special two string function. We pass in a reference to the address and that gives us a string output. The next video, uh, the plan is I will go work through writing a, uh, a an application that uses Surdy JSON to implement a an HTTP client that talks to an API and then parses the result. So that should give you a more interesting example of where you would apply or use JSON uh, in a Rust uh, application. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more.